It's already mm -hmm. on. Okay. See? And there's a message. Uh, okay. So, hey, everybody. This is Dr. Andre Little Mason, also known as Dr. Dula. And I am here. I'm going to move these messages for a minute because I can't see the man's face, the boy's face. Um, I am here. Um, I, I have some, first of all, let me say for me, I have just been thinking and meditating and everything else for quite a bit um, because, uh, you know, I do really well with things. Until, you know, someone kind of messes with my kids. And so <laughs> I feel certain ways about thing and that, things. And I asked my son, I said, would you like to use um, my platform? Would you like to use my platform to say anything? Would you like to use my platform to speak? And he's like, yesterday, like, no, no, I'm going to put it in a poem. I'm going to write it in a poem. Um, then he, this morning, he's like, I'd like to use your platform. I wrote, I wrote what I feel. And now I don't know what he's going to say. And I told him that he could tell me what it was and everything. But before that, because you're going to stay here with me the whole time, right? You're not going to do what you normally do and be like, all right, I'll be back, mom. So first, he said I could not Q&A, no Q&A, but I would like you to share your thoughts. What are your thoughts? What's been going on with you? Your general thoughts. Now, I can ask you questions. That's the only question I I'm going to ask you. No. You think after? Mm -hmm. All right, well, then I'll start with mine. Let me start with mine. Um, I have been in this district, in home of Flossmore District, for... I've lived here in, in, in our home. We've been here almost uh, 20 years now, okay? So we're like at 18 or 19 years. So all of my kids have gone to school um, uh, in the school district. Um, my oldest son's graduated from home of Flossmore High School and all those things. And um, when it comes down to it, there are just a lot of things that uh, I feel very strongly about. Those who read my post know that I feel very strongly about different things. Um, there were in comments. There were, I posted it in a, a moms and dads group of Home with Flossmore. And in that group, it's a bit different because we're very multicultural school, very multicultural neighborhood, very multicultural everything. We are like all blended around here. Um but when anybody starts talking about, let's just have more discussion, something happens with me. Uh, because I, as a birth worker, I know what those discussions look like when we start talking about maternal mortality and, and stuff like that. I know what that looks like when we start saying, black women, tell us how you feel. To me, what it feels like is that people are um, wanting to hear how something makes us feel. When we have things like the internet, we have social media, we have ways for people to learn that don't include me bearing my soul, talking about the pain and, and the, all these things. Um, I do want to say that I spent the day, let me tell you what Homer Flossmore High School did. Um, the principal, uh, Dr. Anderson and Dr. Mansfield, the superintendent of the school board, now they help, uh, Homer Flossmore has one school in a school district. It ultimately is its own school district. It's the only school in it. Uh, the, and so, that's a thing in itself. But what they did yesterday, tell what they did yesterday. They played. Uh, they played a live stream yesterday where they answered questions from the students all throughout the day. All day in their English classes. All day live streaming it. And you can see it on YouTube. I'll actually post it um, in this if you want me to. And they sat at a table and every English person, so it's like five, six, seven times they talked about this incident. They answered questions that people had. Um, I appreciate it. I appreciated them doing it. I took time and watched each like 30, 30 minute snippet. It wasn't wrote. And the kids got you asked questions. And when I tell you these babies were like, um, so Dr. Mansfield and Dr. Anderson, how are y'all black taking up for these kids? So, Dr. I was like, oh. So, um, why the black kids get more pun getting punished than the white kids are not? So, what's happening with them? So, what's whatever? And they were reading the questions, and then the kids got to ask questions via live. So, this is the kind of school this is. This, this school has all of these amenities for the children. They have a TV stage. They have a this. They have a that. So, all day long, in the, in the classes, they streamed live. And we're able to ask questions in their English classes. Okay. So that's, it's, it's quite the thing. It's quite the experience being at the school and all those things. Um, I still can't ask you any questions yet. 
Not yet. Not yet. Okay, you ready to do your poem? I mean, sir, if you, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Are you gonna Are you gonna put it out there? Yeah, okay, so I, I, I he asked he asked to be able to be um to to talk or whatever, and I wanted to give him an opportunity to do that. And then I had a message for um the the parents because I, I you know I said yesterday I talked I had a, I had thoughts about the the parents the parents of and um and I still have those thoughts and I want to try to express myself in a way that doesn't require me to use bulk bold print and so i'm going to do that but i'm going to give him a, a chance to express himself uh to say whatever he would like to say oh don't smile now <laughs> uh but you go ahead and you do what you got to do what you want to do all right um so uh hi everybody how you guys doing what's your name is okay my name is uh andrew mason and um the poetry group that i represent is um Homo Floss Most Poetic Expressions. Say that <laughs> <laughs> and the uh the piece that I wrote concerning this subject is called I Thought I Had a Dream Until I Woke Up. Ooh, I like that actually. Say it again. Can you say it again? I thought I had a dream until I woke up. Okay, and I don't know what this is. Um so I have not seen it or heard it. So all right. My umbilical cord was a chain shackled to my feet. African heritage corrupted by struggle and oppression. I was placed into a corrupted reality with melanin rooted deep into the marrow of my bones, a blessing cursed by white American forefathers. I was born and the system enslaved my mentality, put me into a school that told me that Columbus discovered the already cultivated and occupied that we call the United States, told me that my story's genesis was oppression and enslavement, told me that my origins began on cotton plantation and whipping blocks. But I wish they told me more, like that I had to work five times harder to succeed just to gain five times less of what a white boy receives. See, I heard Martin had a dream and I thought I had one too. That was until I woke up to a white boy screaming and laughing through a face he ain't never truly owned. A face that I simply can't make disappear with soap and water. A face that is a crime for me to live with. A face that owns no privilege in this society except a free life sentence. A face that is a threat to America and is dealt with by bullets. A face that those boys wore. As a joke. See, this problem is bigger than the school itself. It's bigger than its two buildings, bigger than its past, bigger than its campus. So why should I even attempt to sweep it under the rug? I heard that some people wanted to sit down and try to educate their ignorance instead of punishing them. Okay, I'll do it for them right now. Blackface is not a joke. A joke is not blackface. Joke, blackface is not. Blackface is not a joke. I am not a joke. Hundreds of years of slavery and oppression is not a joke. Africans being starved and stuffed on ships like forgotten cargo is not a joke. Africans that were beaten and bruised until they were red, black, and blue are not a joke. Africans being stolen and dragged across the Atlantic is not a joke. The black women that came before me are not a joke. And let me tell you, there are more than one of your six fetishes. They are more than what social media and white history paints them to be. They are more than just a body because, see, black girls, black women, black daughters, black sisters, black mothers, black grandmothers, black queens are not a joke. They are greatness. We, as black people, are greatness. My African ancestors were murdered for trying to change a nation into a place where I could look at two water fountains and drink from both. They lost their lives trying to mold the nation into a place where I could choose whatever career I wanted to and succeed. They fought until they could see the sun and the horizon and kept fi fighting until it set. They fought just so I could go to, the, to a school and receive the same education as a white boy. See, I truly had a dream. That was until that dream turned into a nightmare, and I woke up into this reality. 
Robert, I'm trying to hold it together, brother. You know I'm over here like... Oh, my God. I am so proud of you. I am so proud of you. I am so proud of him. We have worked very hard to teach him how to express all of this that he sees going on in the world. That is amazing. Thank you. You did a very good job. Is there anything you want to say? Excellent. And if you didn't just hear what this boy, you need to come back. Put Turn on the notification so you can come back. Turn on the notification so you can come back. And so you can hear what he said. Those are his words, not mine. Sorry. You go ahead. So, <laughs> yeah, it's just, um, when I first heard it, I was just like, see, I wasn't surprised because I know how ignorant some of the kids at the school are. Though it is, I have to admit, it is a good school and it has good opportunities. I wasn't surprised by the ignorance I saw because I personally know the school, the students that go there. So that wasn't some, I wasn't extremely surprised because I know the way that like some people are in this world. So I was like, wow, okay. And it's just, it amazed me more than it did surprise me because the thing that really amazed me is that before like they didn't even like, at first they didn't even think of apologizing. At first they chose to lie about it. See, I I believe that it was a lie that they didn't know what blackface was. And even if they didn't know what blackface was, it was just, I don't know why they chose black as the color to paint their face in and why they were joking and mocking a black woman at the McDonald's. So, yeah, I think that, um, yeah, I think for the community, the if it was if it was supposed to be, a community demonstration I think that it was that the walkout that happened that was good as a community demonstration that the community like the diverse on Flossmore community was that they were against like what happened so yeah that's what I have to say um I, I wanted to say something um because I have added this to the moms and dads of home of Flossmore um group um, so that it can be, I don't know if it'll be up there or not up there. I'm not sure if anybody from there is, is watching right now. Um, but like I said, I have been in birth work. I have seen these conversations. I have seen what it looks like, what it always ends up being, or what I see it comes down to sometimes is, but does that really happen? It happens when women go into hospitals. Black women say they get different treatment. They are not taking this. But did it really happen? Um, this outcry because of the black face is something that is tangible, is able to be seen. And so people are taking notice. But I want to say something to, um, I have a very diverse Facebook group as well. Um, my Facebook friends are very diverse. So um, I'm going to say this. I, I all day long, I was like, how am I going to say what I'm trying to say? Um, first, I want to say, uh, I, I listened to this seven and a half hours. So it's almost eight hours that they played this video at the school. And and all day long, the principals answered the questions, the hard questions. I was very, very impressed with that. Um, but I just want to say, being in this district almost 20 years and being in this area almost 20 years, I remember when Home of Flossmoor was a zero tolerance school. Uh, those who don't understand how students might be upset by that. I've had two kids that graduated from there already. When you look and you say, okay, this is zero tolerance. And now be, now they say they're going, it's, it's, it's less of a zero tolerance. It's more of a restorative, uh, looking for restorative practices. Many black women, black parents, black mothers feel like it would have been wonderful to have had those restorative practices in, in play. It does not, it, it's hard to take that in. And if we're talking about having conversations, please understand that. For those who have lived in this district and, and who have, have, have seen other things happen over more than a decade, please understand that when you're used to zero tolerance, when you've seen rep repercussions with zero tolerance, that 
to then have it be, we're looking for more restorative things. We want to do that. Hi, Omari. I'm recording. Don't stand there and look weird. Um, seriously, don't do that. Come in or go out. <laughs> what are we I'm talking. You can sit down and listen, but you can't interrupt me. I just said I'm recording. Sit down and listen. And then if you want to say something, you can, okay? Um, here's here's the thing. Um, restorative practice just looks different. I want to point that out. Uh, the other thing that I, I want to say is with, with hey love, we're also we're talking about um when we're talking about conversations when we're talking about moving forward i think it's great that people are talking about what can we do you know what what is the school gonna do and i was like how do i express this to people and and it, it thought came to me because i'm a birth worker think about okay i gotta be mindful it's not just mine okay i think about women whatever all the time and i thought about sex ed and i said okay so sex ed is now taught in school right but there was a time when people said, well, if I don't talk about sex, parents say, if I don't talk about sex, then my kids won't have sex, right? Some people still do that. If I don't talk about it, then they won't do it. But I think we know that that's not really how it happens. Just because you don't talk about it. Hey, my love. Hey. Just because you don't talk about it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. Just because you don't say anything doesn't mean that it won't happen. And when we are talking about how, what changes need to be made, it is fine to say, what is the school going to do to teach? Andrew, did you learn any of that from Homeward Philosopher High School? No. Who taught you that? You guys. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you how I got on this journey. I thought, I was befuddled and bef whatever, I thought, I'm like, okay, I have my, my, my EDD. I have my doctorate. I'm going to go and I'm going to earn a doctorate. And when I finish this doctorate, I'm going to know a whole lot of stuff. I was so disheartened when I earned my doctorate. And I look back and realize that even though I had matriculated to the highest level, the terminal degree, I still knew no more about me, had no more to offer my kids than I did before I started. I'm saying that to say that for those that are looking for conversations, start at home. Everybody is saying, my kids don't know what, what blackface is. That's what they're saying. I'm seeing a lot of people saying, my kids don't know. They don't even know what it is. Okay. My kids didn't know about police brutality and what that was. They had never encountered it before we had a conversation. There are plenty of conversations that we have to have that we don't want to have. We never wanted to, to take the innocence of our children and say, this is what you need to know if you ever get stopped. And all police are not bad, but just understand. They go through a lot. There's a lot of stuff that's in the history in the past. You need to know this. All I have is four sons. I don't have any girls. So even though, okay, even though I didn't want to take their innocence and tell them that some people will look at you like this. Some people will think of you like this. Some people will treat you this way. I had to protect them and equip them for the world. The conversations, when we look at the school and you're saying, what is the school going to do? I'm asking. It bothered me yesterday. I, I, I was bothered by one of the mothers because she said, we're not racist. I, th this is not a racist thing. He doesn't even know what it is. There are a lot of things our kids don't know. But if it's in the real world, we are the first educators. I say that as a mom who homeschooled for 13 years. The first education is at home. So while we will sit and we, we're going to go to the school board, we're going to find out what are you guys going to do? What, what are you going to change? What's going to happen? What's everything? It starts at home, just like sex education. You can blame it on the school for not teaching it. But ultimately, just because you don't talk about sex doesn't mean your kids are not going to have it. We had to teach him about his history. We had to teach him about what the real world would be like. We taught our, our sons, all four of them, on their level, on their level, as they were getting older. My chat, you know, people were like, oh, the school board, get the facts straight. Someone said, you need to make sure you're delivering facts. I didn't say anything about facts. 
What I am saying is parents, those who are ready to go and say, our community, we're better than this. Our, our community, we're stronger than this. We can get through this. Everybody who's saying that, what I'm saying to you is it starts at home. There shouldn't, we, we, I don't wait for my sons to have an encounter. Actually, that was one of the motivations for it. Our older sons, we didn't really talk about black issues, black this, black nothing. My son went away to a university, predominantly white university, and he got stopped a few times by white officers. Um, and he, they always said, what are you doing here? And he was like, I belong here. I go to school here. Show us your ID. Just because he was walking on the campus. He didn't have a car. He was walking. And it devastated him. And then it happened again the next year. And it happened again. And it, it went on. And we hadn't prepared him properly. I'm, I'm saying we had not prepared him properly. I'm letting you know that. We didn't talk about it. Because, you know, we're all one and we're all whatever and it's no problem. But we didn't prepare him. And I promised I would not do that with my younger sons. Because... It took him, he called us one day. He said, they stopped me again. He said, I belong here on this campus. And he said, I went, mom, he said, I went to the, the security office and I stood in there and I said, my name is Eugene Mason IV. I am a student here. I am here on a full tuition scholarship that I earned. I am here, da 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 He said, I had to go. And he said, ma, I just started crying. That's on us, but it won't be with these. This is the last thing that I'm going to say when it comes to this. And I hope that, you know, white parents, I hope you hear me and I hope you hear me in love. I made a comment and I said that when these situations happen, my focus is on my children. I have a history that says that my focus should be on them. There's historical context when racial things happen, when the country is looking like it's looking now. I have a context for that, but this is just a piece, okay, of back to this thing of you need to do it at home. You need to say it at home. You need to start at home. Don't sit and wait for the school to do it. There's a lot going on to where there was a point where if you did this kind of thing, and all you have to do is just search. I'm not going to sit up and give exam examples. If you did this kind of thing, all people, all you had to do was, you know, laugh it off. You've seen it with fraternities and colleges, whatever. That's why I have a hard time understanding how people don't know about this. I don't because it's everywhere. It's, it's everywhere. This whole thing like blackface and different things. This is what I will say, and I say it in love. You need to do what black women and black fathers and black mothers and grandmothers have been doing for a long time and teach your children at home. Your I don't see color is offensive. How can you not see me? That's what you said. When you say I don't see color, you're saying you don't see me. If you say, no, I don't mean that way, what do you mean you're not prejudiced? And, okay, I'll take that. But then if you're really going to empathize, because that's the word that they were talking about in the video all day today for the students, if you're going to really empathize, then understand how this melanin, how th me walking in this melanin for all these years and my sons walking in the skin that they're in, how that affects, understand how that affects their life how it affects mine. It's not enough. I don't want you to be colorblind. I don't want you to pretend not to see me. I, I wear these colors because I think it looks good on my skin. See my color. You don't have to be uh, biased and prejudiced because of it. But understand that, oh, more than likely, these brown complected people have seen some type of something in their lifetime. And if you say you care, and if you say you want our community to come together, if that's what you really want, please do not turn this into a thing of where we sit and we talk about the hurt. The, tell us your hurts. 
I have I take so much offense to that when we have social media, when we have people blogging and posting about it. That is so offensive. No one asks someone that's been violated sexually or raped or anything like that. No one ever tells them, tell us about it. Tell us how it hurt you. That seems voyeuristic to me. That just doesn't seem right for, for this to become a thing of where it's like, tell me about your hurt. There are no, There's enough information for you to find the information and talk to your kids. And here's the thing. While I heard people say, my kids, you know, my kids don't, you know, don't know what blackface is. I didn't hear any of them say, and I didn't either. I didn't see anybody coming. I didn't know what blackface was. So that means that all these incidences of blackface that have come up and come up and come up and you never mentioned it to your children. That's what that means to me. How are we preparing them to be better if we don't do it at home where we can control this narrative and we can tell them who they are and we can explain the challenging things? How are we preparing them? I, you want to say something? Do you have anything to say? No. You know what? You're a joker. I'm going to read some comments um, and see what people have said. I don't know how to do that on here. Okay, yes, I can, I think. Uh, no, I can't. So I'm going to... So what I'm going to do, I see someone that says, I see you for you. I see you for your good soul. This is what Brenda said, if I can move this over. Okay. Brenda says, I see you for you. I see you for your good soul and person you are. Color is your beauty. But the person you are is gorgeous inside. Thank you, Brenda. I don't even know if I know you. Maybe we'll get to meet at some point. And thank you for acknowledging this. Because this is this for 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 people of African descent, for people of of other ethnicities that that wear a brown frame, it has shaped so much of our experiences in the world. And that cannot that that cannot be uh uh a mindfulness of that you can't people can't say there's a mindfulness and at the same time ignore it those two don't go hand in hand they don't go hand in hand um um Dwayne Spire says driving driving while black tell me what black person doesn't know that one exactly um that's a real thing now it might be offensive to some to say something like driving while black it might be offensive to some to to mention anything about uh i don't even know how to get to see my um my comments or whatever uh it might be offensive but it, it's real and so please if you say that you want us to be together there are, i think the the principal said today the school is 70 percent black at least we should not have to justify what our experiences are, even if, if it feels like, oh, well, maybe they got it wrong. No, if <laughs> the experiences are real. Um, let's see. Oh, Jean Gilbert said, hi, Mrs. Mason. Love your family. Love you too. Uh, you know, I feel really awful now because I'm trying to see my comments. It won't do, love. I don't know why it's not. Hold on. Maybe if I click up. it. Maybe if I click it, I don't know why it won't. Exactly. Oh, nope, that's not it. That's a real thing. Now, it might uh, here we go. Oh, maybe I think I can do it now. Okay, so here I go. I'm just I just want to acknowledge you for being here with me. Thank you for that. Um uh Auntie Nita said you're you're the special guest. Remember, many are looking at you, nephew. And you did an amazing job. Thank you. Um I, would you like to read it again at the end or just let it go? Uh, okay, time. I'll let you read it. I'm going to read these comments, and then I'm going to... Um, if you I missed it, I, it's powerful. I, I didn't think, even know what it sounded like. What? I think I'm just going to have to rewind it. You're going to want him to rewind it? Mm -hmm. All right. He expressed himself um, in a spoken word, and it was amazing. So if you didn't see it, please go see it. Uh, uh, Michael Chen said, Viking Television is the YouTube channel name. Thank you. Viking Television is the is the name of uh, the, the channel. And I, I wish somebody would put the maybe the link to the video up there, or I'll do it when we get off of here. Um, let's see. Kenya Grace said, hey, beautiful. Hey. Uh, Nita said, come on, let us hear you. Hear it. You did a good job. She was applauding you. Um, 
let's see so moved by seeing it thank you cassandra um that was beautiful someone asked ashley that's your cousin ashley said that thank you. um that was amazing he said it all yes you did we need to listen to the children thank you for that again um this is the doula mama i was telling you about oh okay miriam yes i know miriam by the way <laughs> we saw each other last weekend yes love watching her um Okay, so Michelle said, um, this is my big sister. <laughs> she said, I'm bothered by the fact that parents do not know that they have this responsibility. We as parents have become so lazy and disconnected from our parental responsibility. Somewhere we have forgotten that God gave us, parents, our children, not the public school. A Karen said, open communication starts at home and then it branches out. A lot of people don't understand what you're saying until they face it exactly. I'm just saying that. Just just be mindful. What you I have empathy. I, I look, I let me be clear. I don't judge people's children. I know what my kids are like. I homeschooled them for 13 years. I know what their little specialties are. And they are figuring out life and they're going to make mistakes. Um so I do not I am not in any way acting as if oh some people got it together, some people don't. But I do know when, when it comes to saying we didn't even talk about it, that's what I question. And that's what I challenge. This starts at home, white parents, black parents. I, I don't say black parents because black parents know. You know, we have to have these conversations. But I am saying, you know, if you care about the safety of your kids, and I don't even know if I said this before the right way, if you really care about the safety of your kids and you you need to talk to your, your sons and daughters and help them understand that things are different. Things are different. Their, the anger level is rising. So you need, when you see something come up like we do, when you see something come up, you say, okay, listen, let me talk to you about this. You see this right here? You see this right here? Okay, this is so-and-so. That's how you protect your children. Don't wait. Don't assume that you can just pretend like it's not there. It's there. Talk to your kids. If you know what blackface is and you know whatever, then tell them this is what this is. This is what we, but that's what black parents have to do. Okay. Um, Brenda says, as a white family, my sons know the worth of a person, but as a mother of a non-black of non-black children, it is my job to ensure they know the history, the good and the and the dark. More education at home and school needs to happen. Thank you. I agree. I agree, Brenda. It starts at home and then the, the schools can support what we do. But to 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 make this about what the school will do to me is not looking at this full picture. This is not just about what the school will do. This is actually about what we will do as parents. I spent time talking to my son because I saw him looking a little poppy. I'm like, oh, come here. What you thinking about? What you thinking about? Come talk to me. Look, look, what you need? What you need? I just, you know, I just, I just, I, uh, talk to me. Come on. What's coming on? Come on. Come on. Come on. Tell me. He called his aunt. He called an aunt of his. He, he's like, okay, who, who you want to talk to? Who you, who's going to help you? What, what are you feeling? And he said, I'm just going to write about it. I'm just going to write about it. Yes. Okay. We have to do our part. Uh, I think I got all of them now. I might have. I think I did. So thank you guys for um, being on here with me. Uh, um, he says that he won't read it again. I'm going to see if I can get it. Well, no, I didn't. Wait, 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 wait. Um, my, 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 Karen Ruff. She says, oh, um, oh no, no. J Jen Gilbert. Hey. She says, thank you for being a positive person as well as Andrew and Cameron's life. I love Cameron and you know it. I love Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> Karen said, there's a racial problem. At, there was a racial problem at a grammar school in South Holland last year. It involved them taking sixth through eighth grade to a camp for about four or five days. The children were involved in a simulation. Oh my God, of slavery. Whew. They had to run through a forest as if they were caught. As if they were caught. They had to say something like they were free. Oh my God, I can't. Oh, oh. Breathe through you. My friend was very upset because the parents had no knowledge of it. See, so this is where people say, okay, we didn't know it was so offensive. And this is where um, 
Yeah, I'm going to read this and I have one more thing to say. Karen said, other parents weren't mad at the school system, did nothing. So now we are a year later and facing this HF at HF High School. Yes. Uh, Cassandra said, you're doing an amazing job. Thank you, Cassandra. And um, James said, couldn't agree with you more. My wife is a beautiful black woman. It's one thing I pray about every day for when the Lord, I'm oh, sorry, every day for when the Lord blesses us with children. Thanks for the input and wisdom. God bless. God bless you too, James. Um, I just want to say one more thing and, and then I promise I'll get off. You pro you're not going to read it. You sure you're not going to read it? Just read it. We talked so long. Okay. 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 I just want to say one more thing. A lot of times the first thing that comes is um, the apology and the forgiveness. Will you forgive? And I also want to just offer additional perspective about this. Um, I'll say it as gently as I can. As a country, we're not very forgiving with other people who offend us, right? There is no other group of people in this country that has been asked, that is asked to forgive as much as um, people of African descent. There is no other group um, that is asked to, can you, can you, you know, do you forgive them? Do you forgive them? Okay. Um, sometimes it's tied to our religion or, you know, what God would do or whatever else. And what I want to offer is this part of humanity in our humanity is the ability to be angry. If something hurts us, um, the principal said today and Dr. Mansfield said that the children tried to apologize and no one wanted to hear their apology. What I'm going to, to ask and, and encourage is that along with the humanity um, and the conversations that you said, the, allow the humanity to feel. Uh, for many African-Americans, we have lived lifetimes of having to not show what we felt. And it goes back since we got here. Um, to show what we felt to be angry could be detrimental when you're angry about an injustice and you show a certain kind of whatever, if you are pulled over and there's no reason and whatever, and you show your anger, it could be detrimental. I'm going to encourage you to just allow the feeling of what it feels like. No, leave the door there. It's fine. To allow the feeling of, to allow that cognitive dissonance to dissipate. To say this happened, it made me angry. And no one to say, oh, oh, just forgive him. Just forgive him. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'm just going to encourage it not to be that. Allow us to be human. Allow us to, to feel. Uh, uh, there are comments that people are making saying, we don't need any violence. We don't, even that is offensive. I read comments and my husband was like, babe, look at this comment. No one needs to be, you know, they don't need to, not a need for violence. So the notion of our anger being attached to the things that have been happening and finally expressing it is it makes people unsettled. Like they can't, they can't be, we can't, we have to watch. We don't want them to get angry. No, we are human too. We feel anger and sadness and everything. And I know it might seem patronizing to say it, but if you're asking and wanting that people get over something that is so connected to a history and a past like that, and you're not willing to at least, at least say, I understand why they're angry. Like, seriously, can you understand? To the credit of Homer Flossmer as well, in the video that they put on um, Viking TV, Viking television on YouTube, that's there. And you can go and look at it. It's long, but you have to skip past and you'll see what they did. They also showed the, um, they also showed the history of blackface. And it was related to when Megan, Ke Megan Kelly was um, dismissed from her show because of her comments about blackface. So that's that. You want to read it again? You ready? Uh, yeah. And thank you guys. Let me check. Heather, oh wait. Heather said, I love that I caught this live. I have a white woman raising three children, three black girls. And as much as I try to teach and show them, I unfortunately would never fully understand what they will have to go through. 
I'm very thankful for all the amazing black women in my life that educate them and, th and they have someone to talk to that understands. I had a conversation with my oldest about the situation at HF because she has seen it all on the news and was upset that someone around here would do this. Thank you, Heather. It's a real fear. And we always have to talk to our kids about it. Um, not just because it's like, oh, they, they're different fears. So thank you for surrounding your girls with uh, other uh, black women who can talk to them and things like that. Um, uh, Karen said, was that the punishment? What was the punishment, Karen? Um, what the principal and the, and the super, um, superintendent emphasized was that um, according to, based on the law, students have rights. And unless a parent or someone told says what the punishment was, they do not divulge the punishment of any children, um, any consequences or anything like that. They do not share that because that is not um, permitted by the school to do. Um, so there is no knowledge of what the disciplinary action was. They stated that they understood that that was challenging to people to not know what had happened. Um, I understand as an educator, I get it. As an educator, I get it. You, you know, um, like I said, the kids ask any and everything. And they're looking at two black administrators and saying, how are y'all you know, just here and no consequences. And Dr. Mansfield said, you know, I work for the, for the, you know, the school board. I, I, um, for the, not the school board, the work. Thank you. I'm in the administration. My job is to look at everyone and to take care of everyone. Um, and so that's what happened with that, Karen. Marilyn said the entire concept of cultural competence demands that we see color. Yes. Thank you for showing us how to behave when this happens. Oh, thank you, sis. It's hard. I'm not, I, I think I yelled a lot, <laughs> you know, because I feel and I'm entitled to feel. I don't have to think right away, oh, you know, whatever. I can feel for my children and I can wonder about their safety. Cassandra said, if they were black, we would all know. Well, Cassandra, they said that that wasn't the case. They said that the only reason why a different incident at the beginning of the school year with a bunch of kids came out was because the parents shared it. That's what they said. You really got to go watch because they answered that like over and over and over. You really just look at the video. You have to skip through it. But they did seven different segments, I think, for the kids. Um, and I think that's it. Okay. I love you. And I would like you to close out with this. Yes, ma'am. I'm very proud of you. You have anything else you'd like to say before we go? Uh, anything else? Any well, of his thoughts? I just to say that, um, any thoughts on the thing? Yeah, I think that, uh, no, I, I think I'm just going to read it. Again. You'll read it. Okay. He says a lot in here. So if you didn't hear it the first time, um, yeah. Hey, Mon Mari, he's about to read. Can you sit down for me? You're coming over here. I'm getting your water bottle. Oh, thank you, love. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, hey everybody, if you don't already know, my name is Andrew Mason, and I'm here, I'm re representing my school's poetry team called Poetic Expressions. Say that! And <clears throat> the title that I came up with for this piece is... Speak up, baby. I thought I had a dream until I woke up. My umbilical cord was a chain shackled to my feet, African heritage corrupted by struggle and oppression. I was placed into this corrupted reality with melanin rooted deep into the marrow of my bones, a blessing cursed by white American forefathers. I was born and the system enslaved my mentality put me into a school system that told me that Columbus discovered the already cultivated and occupied that we call the United States, told me that my story's genesis is oppression and enslavement, told me that my origins began on cotton plantation and whipping blocks. But I wish they told me more. I wish they told me that I have to Work five times harder to succeed just to gain five times less of what a white boy receives. See, I heard Martin have it, had a dream and 
I thought I had one too. That wasn't until I woke up to a white boy screaming and laughing through a face he ain't never truly owned. A face that I simply can't make disappear with soap and water. A face that is a crime for me to live with. A face that owns no privilege in this society except a free life sentence. A face that is a threat to America and is dealt with by blue bullets. A face that those boys wore as a joke. See, this problem is bigger than the school itself. It's bigger than its two buildings, bigger than its past, bigger than its campus. So why should I even attempt to sweep it under the rug? I heard that some people want to sit down and try to educate their ignorance instead of punishing them. Okay, I'll do it for them right now. Blackface is not a joke. A joke is not blackface. Joke, blackface is not. Blackface is not a joke. I am not a joke. Hundreds of years of slavery and oppression is not a joke. Africans being starved and stuffed on ships like forgotten cargo is not a joke. Africans that were beaten and bruised until they were red, black, and blue are not a joke. Africans being stolen and dragged across the Atlantic is not a joke. The black women they came before me on that a joke. And let me tell you, there are more than one of your sick fetishes. There are more than what social media and white history paints them to be. There are more than just a body because, see, black girls, black women, black daughters, black sisters, black mothers, black grandmothers, black queens ain't no joke. They are greatness. We as black people are greatness. My African ancestors were murdered for trying to change a nation into a place I could look at two water, fo water fountains and drink from both. They lost their lives trying to mold the nation into a place where I could choose whatever career I wanted and succeed. They fought until they couldn't see the sun in the horizon and kept fighting until the sun rose again. They fought just so I could go to school and receive the same education as a white boy. See, I truly had a dream. That was until that dream turned into a nightmare and I woke up into this reality. I love you. Thank, Thank you. you for being a part of this with me today. You're welcome. I appreciate you. And I appreciate you guys who are here with me. Thank you for all the care and the love and, and all that it entails. I just celebrate the humanity of all of us and the right for all of us to be human. Bye.